Hello everybody, welcome to my video on virtual work. So what we're going to be doing in this video is kind of give a really quick introduction to virtual work. Uh, it's not going to go into too much detail, uh, but we'll basically motivate with a simple example and then see how we can solve for deflection uh, for trusses. So this will basically lead on to the next video where we'll talk about how we can use the method of virtual work to solve for truss deflections. So before we actually go into virtual work, let's recall what we mean by work. So work is not in um, like the normal work in terms of you working towards getting a good grade in the exam. What we, when we talk about work, at least in engineering and physics, what we actually mean is mechanical work. So we say work is done when the point of application of the force moves in the direction of force. So we, like more formally work is actually the dot product. Um, basically, this is the symbol for the dot product over here. Um, so what happens is work is the dot product of the vector force and the vector, which is the displacement of the point. So when we have a dot product, it basically becomes FD cos theta. So if we have a point like so, and then I apply a force, and then it moves to somewhere over here, we are basically measuring this distance here. If the point moves from here to here, we basically, since the horizontal, the distance along the force is the same, we are actually doing the same amount of work. Um, so in case we have basically apply a force like this, and the point moves from here to here, right? the point basically moves in the opposite direction, your work basically is negative. So that's where the cos theta comes in. So if basically the f and the d vector are on opposite sign, basically f and d both are vectors, then the work is negative. So work is actually a form of energy. Uh, so if f and d are in the same direction, work is positive, and you're kind of adding energy into the system. If f and d are in opposite directions, you're basically removing energy from the system. So generally, this makes more sense if you have kind of uh, potential energy that kind of gets gained. So basically, if you have a mass like this, and the object basically moves up because you apply some force here, the potential energy of the system actually increases, and then you can think that this work is actually doing, um, or rather this force is actually doing some work against gravity. So a simple example to illustrate uh, basically what happens when you have a force uh, and then it moves moving again gravity or how the work is done so imagine you have an object like this so it has some mass m and then you have the gravity acting down like this right so now i'm going to apply a force f on this object and basically my aim is to keep it in equilibrium uh, and then potentially my F is basically moving this object from this location to some other location like so. So this is going to be H. So now if you can think about the work done by this force, So that's going to be this. Uh, so the work done in moving this mass because of this force is going to be the force times the distance over here. We can do the same thing. We can think of gravity also being a force, which is basically the weight of the object, in which case the force is basically going to be the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So it's going to be m times g. So the work that's going to be done basically moving this mass up by this direction h is going to be mg times minus h. So what is the total work done? So it's going to be the total work done is going to be the work done by this force and added to it is going to be the work done by the weight. So uh, it basically gives us f, um, this is the, just the normal multiplication, so f times h minus mgh. 
So at this point, we can basically think of it in two ways. So on one hand, if um, we are already great in physics and then we basically know for equilibrium, f needs to be equal to mg, then we can infer from this equation that if you substitute a f equal to mg, that this term basically becomes zero. Right? This is fairly straightforward. The alternate way of doing it is you can basically say that the total work that's done is going to be zero because the system is in equilibrium. You basically say if the system is in equilibrium, no force actually does any additional work. So then what we can do is we can say, okay, I don't know these two are actually equal. What I'm going to do is basically equate this to zero. So that's the second thing we do. So we basically say F uh, times H minus MGH equal to zero. And then I'm going to cancel this H term over here. And then I can conclude basically that F is MG. This is basically the same concept. So you don't actually get an additional equation, just that if you don't know one of these parameters, for instance, if you assume you don't know F, you can basically use the method of virtual work to, uh, or rather method, like we haven't come to virtual work yet, but we can basically use this method to calculate um, the, the force value. So the concept of virtual work is similar to the actual work itself. The only difference is that um, either the force or the displacement that we use is kind of imaginary. So because it's imaginary, we can basically come up with any rules that would basically benefit us. So what we say is, uh, we will assume that the virtual for force, if you're using the uh, virtual force in our calculation, we'll assume that it doesn't do any additional deflection or it doesn't produce any additional deflection. Um, if we basically um, assume a virtual deflection, we'll assume that it doesn't produce any additional force. The rest of the physics we assume are still maintained, so we can't like, come up, um, if you make up everything, then it wouldn't really help you and it wouldn't really help you solve any of the problems. Um, so what we do is we assume the rest of the equations are valid, so if the system is equilibrium, forces need to balance, um, if the system is connected, if you're doing a virtual displacement, all the displacements or the distances it moves needs to match up properly. Um, so basically, if we uh, apply a virtual force, it's going to be useful for determining an actual displacement. If we apply, excuse me, a virtual displacement, it's useful to calculate um, the unknown force. So previously, we did kind of a calculation um, to do the, um, um, like we activate an actual force uh, of a one Newton force, but it's not needed. What we can do is we can basically make it into a virtual force and then make our life a little bit easier. Okay, so now what we're going to do is basically um, use the method of virtual work um, to calculate this force tension or the tension in this rope of the pulley over here. So this is basically the weight we kind of like it's acting down here uh, and then we need to determine how much this tension is and then we'll use the method of virtual work. So we already know from statics that this value needs to be W or two, but nonetheless humor me and then let's see if we can solve this using method of virtual work. So for that, what we need to do is first examine what happens when we try to move um, either the weight or the tip of the pulley by a particular distance. So notice that the rope actually travels twice the distance. So if the weight needs to move down by one unit, um, the tip or the location of this force moves down by two units. So if we compare, uh, what happens if we basically just draw the diagram, assuming this distance from this point to this point is D. So what will need to happen is that the rope needs to, because the center point itself moves down, this point will move by a distance d here and the rope needs to expand on this side by d as well. So there is going to be 1d here and then 1d here. So the total distance this force moves, so t moves by 2 times d. Right? So now if you assume this uh, is going down uh, by a distance d, 
So we can think about the work done by W. So I'm going to unfortunately use the same thing. So it's going to be W sub W is going to be this little W times D. Um, the W sub T is going to be T and here is where you need to be careful. So when this moves down, uh, the tip also moves down. So basically we are moving in the same direction. So this becomes T times 2D the same um, like the displacement of this point and the tension on the same side so next what we do is basically equate these two and then we notice that the D would be common so basically this D would basically cancel out that leaves us that T would be equal to W over 2 this is something we kind of knew all along but it's another way of actually getting this on top of the equilibrium equation. So now we are going to examine what happens uh, when we make things slightly inter interesting. Um, so we are going to assume here that we already know that the force in the spring is going to be F would be W over 2. Now what we previously did was we applied a virtual displacement. Now we are going to do is basically apply a virtual force. So basically I am going to pull in addition to the original one Newton force, I am going to assume that um, uh, I am applying a virtual one Newton force which does not make any additional deflection on my object. So I think about what will happen. So if I have the spring over here, uh, what basically happens is when I apply uh, a one additional like this weight this basically is going to expand. So we are interested in finding out how far this point would have deflected because of this force uh, or rather because of the weight and then we having that spring over here. So in order to do that what we do is we basically apply this one Newton virtual force. Um, now we basically have two things that are happening. Um, let me write this again. So I am going to use the blue here to denote the real forces. So let us do real. and then this is going to be the virtual. Okay. So uh, maybe I should have written this in red. So I'll just underline this in red and then this is going to be in blue. Uh, so what will happen is in the spring the real force is going to be W over 2. The virtual force, I can apply any value here, but because I have chose to apply 1 Newton, the virtual force is going to be 1 over 2, kind of by the same argument here. So basically this 1 Newton virtual force will also distribute on the two sides and then we get half. Now what, are, what is going to happen is we are going to have a real deflection, we will call that D. The deflection due to the virtual force from our assumption is going to be 0. So this is the thing. Uh, you need to keep in mind. Now what we basically do is it is kind of like a tricky assumption. We assume that this 1 Newton virtual force had always existed and then uh, whatever extra uh, displacement happens is also doing work against this virtual force. So when we do that um, basically this point here moves down uh, by a particular distance uh, and then the spring here is also going to expand by a particular distance. right? So how much does this, so the spring constant is k, the uh, distance, so basically the spring, this is the distance of the tip here, so this is for the p. So let us see um, d sub p would be our displacement of the spring or d sub s. So because of this w over 2, uh, what basically happens is that the spring would have deformed by W over 2 divided by K. We basically assume that the spring does not deform because of the virtual force. There is no additional deformation because of the virtual force. So what we actually do is we multiply um, this value over here 
which is the virtual force inside the spring and then we multiply it by the real deflection. So this would basically give us the internal virtual work. So we will basically say W i for internal is going to basically be my virtual force, it is going to be half in red because it is a virtual force and then times this real displacement is basically W over 2 and then that divided by k, sorry this should be divided over here and that divided by k, right. So the virtual, basically the external work done which is basically going to be here is going to be, uh, let us call this W e, so here the virtual force here is going to be 1 Newton. So this basically becomes 1 and then times, uh, so we are interested in finding out how far this point moves. So if this is basically d, that is basically what we did written here, we are going to multiply by d over here, excuse me. Right. Um, what we basically do is basically equate this guy to this guy and then we can basically solve for our deflection. So I am going to clear the screen and then show you how this looks. Um, so we are basically going to equate these two. So what we did was we are going to equate, um, let us let me still maintain the same color. Um, so we basically had W by 2K. this is basically the real thing. Um, so multiply this by half and we are going to basically equate this um, to the actual force like basically the external value. So the external uh, displacement which is going to be the actual displacement is going to be d and then times uh, 1 which is the virtual force, virtual displacement. So this basically gives us d would be equal to um, w by 4, w by 4k. So keep in mind that instead of this 1 Newton, if I basically used p Newtons here, this basically becomes p, this becomes p and then I will basically cancel out these two p's and then I will still get the same result. So that is the reason to make life easier, we kind of started with a 1 Newton force. So this kind of summarizes how we can potentially use the method of virtual work to calculate the displacement. Now I am just going to motivate you to uh, discuss about why we would use method of virtual work rather than actually try to solve for the deflection of the truss. So imagine you have this truss like so, uh, basically you have a 100 Newton that is being applied here. So we know that we already know the internal forces, right? If this is 100, this is going to be compression of 100. Uh, this is going to be in tension 141.4 and then this is also going to be in compression 100. So if you are not sure about this, kind of revisit the discussion on uh, method of sections and method of joints and then you can solve for these particular values. So now if we separate these out kind of put them apart, so I am kind of hidden the nodes. So let us see what is going to happen here. So basically because of the compression, this link gets longer, so this gets longer, these two get shorter because they are in compression, right? So you are basically squishing them, so they become shorter. So now if we try to assemble them, so I am going to put the node here, kind of I bring this guy here bring the other one here and then try to see what happens. So now there is basically a gap, I mean obviously I have exaggerated the distances, basically there is a gap here uh, and then we are going to have to rotate these objects like so to actually um, basically assemble this together. So notice that it is not very easy to calculate the deflection. What is typically done in finite element calculation is basically you kind of assign displacements to the, uh, to the joints and then you use that. Uh, kind of create a matrix and then try to solve for the actual displacement in both directions. 
Uh, what we'll do in the other video is basically use the method of virtual work to solve for this deflection and then use the same thing to solve for redundant trusses. Thank you.